And good morning. Welcome to the Native News Today. Gerald Wofford joined alongside Jason Salzman. As always, we thank you for joining us this morning, especially the first Saturday of the year 2007. Man, we're so ready to go. You know, 2006 was so good to us here at Native News Today. So many great stories in Indian country we were able to cover. And, you know, you look back on it, we started in February, and uh, here we are now in January, you know, and uh, it's just I mean, it's a little bit overwhelming to think about all the stories we've covered, where we've been, the people we've met, and you look back on it, and we kind of figured there was no better way to, uh, to commemorate a year than to look back on some of the best stories, and that's what we're doing here today, but we're also welcoming a new guest. Yes, we want to welcome our viewers in the Oklahoma City area to the Native News today. We've expanded our program out to the western part of the state so that we have a broader view of the native news issues going on out there. And so this show here is kind of an introduction to our program, to the Oklahoma City area. We want to show you some of the new segments that we covered throughout the year. And also for our Tulsa viewers too, a chance to look back at the year and look at some of the new segments that we covered throughout the year. Yeah, and the, one of the things about Oklahoma City is we're so excited. We wanted to be there uh, a long time and it's finally worked out to where we could uh, do that and be in Oklahoma City. And we want to thank Cox Communications for making that possible and also uh, the good people of Oklahoma City area uh, who requested this show there. And, and now it's there and, and we're going to be uh, doing our best to pump out those great stories that uh, we all have come uh, you know, become accustomed to here on this show, and uh, that's not going to change just because we got a new audience. It's going to keep going. And so, in a way, we purchased our proverbial uh, pike pass, if you will. Yes, we we got it. We're sticking it up on the uh, windshield there. Doot. But let's not talk about Pike Pass because I, I think I owe the uh, Turnpike a little bit of money. I might have might have went through the other day without change. So, keep it keep it hush hush. Well, we've got a lot of news stories to share with our folks out there. Some of them, as we mentioned, are about the political, like Governor Henry at the state capitol, very historic bill that was signed concerning tribal sovereignty there. We'll talk with him, very new segment that we shared there back in the spring as well. Yeah, and we'll not only delve into politics on this show, but we also delve into historical things and culture. And when you're talking about culture and history, it doesn't really get more uh, MO than the Council Oak Tree in Tulsa, the birthplace of the city of Tulsa, the birthplace of the Creek Nation here in Oklahoma, and we were there uh, to cover a special story and a man that absolutely saved that famous tree. Yes, we think you'll enjoy that story very much as well. Also, the past summer was the Creek Festival. A lot of entertainers were there, including famed Native American actress Irene Bedard. Mm -hmm. The voice of Disney's Pocahontas and really the model for that movie and just they used her for everything. So Irene was able to visit with us and she's a sweet lady and it was, it was nice to be able to visit with her. So a lot of great things going on. And on the cultural side, medicine man Dave Lewis shares some of his items with the Oklahoma Historical Society. They came out and talked with him and, and Mr. Lewis will be on hand to talk about what all was involved with that and his family history in the uh, medicinal art of medicine making. Yeah, and so we're excited about all that. We're excited to have our new audience in Oklahoma City and we're ready to go for 2007. Plus so. two, another segment too we gotta share with you. Our, our man here went out in search of the perfect fry bread. Me? It's a continuing segment that we'll continue to show here, but his first time out, it was really <laughs> historical, so we'll share that with you as well. Well, I was looking, you know, I was looking everywhere. All those seg new segments as well here on the Native News Today. It's here. It's hot. And it's only at Creek Nation Casino in Muskogee, the ultimate treasure hunt, and it's going on now through April 1st. A Suzuki Boulevard motorcycle, Chevy Silverado truck, and $20,000 in cash prizes are up for grabs, and 20 lucky winners will find their own pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's all happening right off Highway 69 in Muskogee. Creek Nation Casino, where OK comes to play. Here at the College of the Muskogee Nation, we pride ourselves on emphasizing Native culture, values, language, and self-determination while providing a positive learning environment for tribal and non-tribal students. We encourage our students to be lifelong learners and to strive for personal growth, professional advancement, and intellectual advancement. Muskogee Nation College. Academic Achievement. Native Values. The Native American Times provides news coverage that is specifically tailored to the Native American perspective. We emphasize an understanding of special issues such as sovereign rights, civil rights, 
and government-to-government relations. Our staff of reporters and columnists provide a daily digest of news that is often utilized for national outlets, such as CNN, NBC News, ABC News, the Los Angeles Times, and many others, because the whole world is Indian country. Today's world is far different than the one our ancestors knew. But though times have changed, we the Muscogee Creek people remain a strong people. Many of our traditions continue to thrive in today's modern world. For a thousand years and more we have been here, and we will be here for a thousand more. Times have changed, but so have we, and the Muscogee Creek people are a part of this time, this country, and this economy. Mike Hall with the Tulsa 66 as you watch your Native News Today. Come check us out for a lot of that this year. We're here on the grounds of the Oklahoma State Capitol building in Oklahoma City, where it's been a historic day for not only the Muscogee Creek Nation, but for all Indian tribes everywhere. As Governor Brad Henry gathered with tribal leaders, as well as state representatives, to sign into action Senate Bill 1706, giving full authority of the housing agency of the state to the Muscogee Creek Nation Housing Authority. Governor Henry stressed the importance of state and tribal relations. And that's really what it's all about, working together as sovereign nations. I'll tell you, Chief Ellis and I have, uh, have really formed a great relationship, a great friendship, a great bond. Uh, we've, we've tackled some very difficult and challenging issues, but we're working together in partnership to build a better state. Tribal sovereignty is something I believe in, will continue to be a strong voice for, and it also shows the state that our tribes are sovereign nations, and we have state to state, in a sense, as a tribal uh, sovereign nation, they have a relationship and can go directly to the head of our state, and that's what this day is all about. Cree Nation Chief A.D. Ellis has worked this bill through for three years and was glad to see it signed. We don't want to be an enemy of the state, we want to be a partner with them. And, uh, and they've been a partner with us by passing this law, letting the tribe take over all the housing authority, and which was, by the way, about $43 million in assets. So we got a good start, and probably next week another compact will come up, and uh, hopefully we'll do the same thing. Well, in October, we ventured out to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and visited the historical Council Oak ceremonial site. And the Council Oak, uh, without the city of Tulsa, uh, with the city of Tulsa and the Council Oak, you can't divide the two. The city of Tulsa is there because of the Council Oak. That is a tradition that was started by the Creeks from bringing the fires over from the ceremonial homelands before the removal. And it's there today. And uh, But it's there today because of the efforts of one man, and Gerald Wofford was able to tell his story. We are here today at the historic Council Oak tree in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Council Oak ceremony took place today. And I'm speaking with a gentleman who's had a very historical part in preserving this tree, which is right behind us, talking to none other than Mr. Eunice Hill, speaker with New York Ceremonial Ground. Mr. Hill, we appreciate your time. Thank you. You were sharing a story up here when you were addressing the audience about your part in preserving this tree when you had learned that uh, city officials were perhaps considering uh, cutting it down. Yes, uh, at the, uh, back in the 70s, we were uh, working for st uh, Statewide Tree Service Company out of Oakham, Oklahoma, and then a contract to the public service here in Tulsa, and because we work all over this area. But uh, at that time, they was clearing out this place here, they was going to build apartment houses, and we happened to be the crew that was called over here to take care of this uh, cutting trees down and trimming. And so we got to this big tree here, that oak tree, and uh, we asked the public service supervisors that uh, we got to cut this down. They said, yeah, all the trees got to be cut down. And we knew a little history about this tree here. And uh, we talked to each other because there's five of us and all of us talking Creek. And uh, George Manek was the uh, assistant chief in New York ground. And the mother was just the members and I was uh, a speaker and we had five of us. I said, we talked about it. I said, maybe we better think about this. We can't cut this tree down. And so we told that public service supervisor, I forgot what his name was. Uh, in a way, he was around, we called him up. I said, we told him that we can't touch this tree. I said, how come? I said, this tree is, uh, belongs to the Creek Nation. We know a little history about it, a uh, meeting place. It, it didn't matter to him, I guess. I said, but it's got to be a go, cut down. I said, well, 
we're not cutting it down. We're not touching it at all. So if you want us to fire us, the whole crew, we go ahead and leave. But I think uh, at that time, I think he got a hold of Tulsa mayor. Mayor come around here and we talked with him and told him the history and the story of the tree. So that's how we saved this tree. So if it wasn't for us, if it was somebody else, other crew come here, they would have had it cut down. It so happens that we were there and we were here. So we the ones kind of save that tree for them. And then now, uh, the history, is, it's a history now. So I think about it one time, I said, we almost cut that tree down. And uh, now they wouldn't have no tree here. But, you know, I heard him about uh, Magnetars. Now he might have done it, talked about it before us, but the boys cutting it down, we saved it. And now that today we have this ceremony where we honor and remember this cancel oak tree and what it means to the Muscogee Creek Nation, and you look at this here, how, how do you feel about that this tree is still preserved and, and what it means to the tribe? I feel real happy with it, uh, cause we didn't know that it's gonna get that big, but you know, uh, later on, we got to have a meeting here. We got to start coming back here, start having celebration. And that's good, I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. And I always look forward to this meeting, the celebration. And I'm glad we saved this tree, because uh, just, like uh, just like I said, I didn't know the history of it before that, about the tribe was here, but just a little bit about this oak tree, the meeting tree, that's what we knew about. And so right now, I really, uh, I'm glad that we did save it, and uh, I'm glad the Muskogee people sure they like it, and uh, uh, I'm always looking forward to come here. Mr. Eunice Hill, Speaker of New York, a ceremonial grab. And Gerald, we not only delve into politics and culture here on this show, we also honor those that have come before us that have really done great things in, uh, in Indian country, and certainly Philip Kuhn is one of those gentlemen. That's right, World War II veteran, uh, Batan Death March survivor. He was honored at the Veterans Day Parade in Tulsa, Oklahoma recently. We caught up with him. This is what he had to say. Veterans Day ceremonies were held in Tulsa, Oklahoma on November 10th. Veterans from around the area were honored in a parade in downtown Tulsa. Serving as parade marshal of the parade was Creek veteran Philip Kuhn. Kuhn served in World War II in the Pacific and was a prisoner of war. His son Michael Kuhn, who is a veteran of the Vietnam War, was proud that his father was selected to serve as parade marshal. I makes me feel proud because he got to uh, be chief of staff this year. He said that uh, the committee wanted him, even though before my dad even accepted, they had already voted him in to be chief of staff. Yeah, there's so many uh, uh, Indians that volunteer that's usually never drafted, and this is what makes it so special to us. Philip talked about his time in the service and how being an orphan in the Uchi boarding school helped him out. I knew the basic uh, short command because I uh, in boarding school. So I had a maid when I got in the military. Because the sergeant asked me, I want to talk to you. And he took those kids, the other guy, he go and said, hey, what military school did you go? It wasn't. I said, the orphan school that was. What we did all those cadence, you know, marching, right or black, and all that. Well, I think about the ones that didn't, didn't come back, especially my friend, Jacob Conchill, still bad over in the Philippines. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more Native News Today. Smiley, that's our choosing a young guy, Stone Sanga. Bunga, I think, by Hayat Coach. No, yeah, I'm August. Bunga, I had to get on over. Fanny Molo just about Anga. Uh huh. Two more shots. He's a honey so by the door. What? He did more cats at each in his after the stone with Anga. But he's a mock as a worker, a digger. He's a great and he's a man. He's a man. The Muscogee Creek Nation Tobacco Prevention Program offers all cessation classes to young and old. For more information about a healthier life and a second wind, contact one of these centers nearest you. <laughs> See you near to the dogs. More Well, he's more casca, more cans, or no, still easy to eat. Back in October, we visited with medicine man Dave Lewis, who donated some of his items to the Oklahoma Historical Society. Dave Lewis is an accomplished medicine man whose family has a long history involved with this art. 
a uh, long history there you said and he not only is a medicine man but also involved in tribal politics as a national council member on the Creek Nation so Dave Lewis has been through a lot and he's also held on to that very strong tradition of in the native community not only in the Creek Nation but all Indians everywhere and that's the uh, uh, the act of medicine and uh, and we were able to report this story I'm Dr. Mary Jane Ward and I am Indian historian at the Oklahoma Historical Society we are very much appreciative and very excited about this gift from David Lewis, Jr. It will be added to the collections at the Oklahoma Historical Society. We will do our best to take good care of it, but at the same time, it will be an opportunity for us to put away and to preserve some of the tools that he has used over the years and that his family has used over the years in serving the Creek people, in healing, and in other areas. So we're very excited about this gift and I think this is probably the first thing of this type that we've received. This little horn here, the last time I used it, it's years ago. But a man was complaining about his leg, mm -hmm. that he was hurting so bad he couldn't sleep. But when I looked at it, it man, it was, I mean, it had a big red spot on there. And then I, I had a glass, real sharp glass. I cut it just like that. And I took this horn and I sucked that thing. Mm -hmm. then, and it started coming out, and then I pulled this away, and I took my finger, and I pulled it on out. It was a tail of a scorpion. You know, a special event that happens every summer, specifically in June, is the Creek Nation Festival. So many things happening, games galore, good food, good music. Just arts and crafts, all of it happening, and you were out there. Yeah, you? I was out there running around crazy, trying to just keep up with everything that was going on. Like you said, there's food, entertainment, arts and crafts, concerts, sporting events. I mean, you name it, this thing has it. And we were just all over the place, and we were able to run down a Native American actress that's uh, caused a lot of waves out in Hollywood and made a name for herself. And up from the great white north. Well, not really the great white north, that's Canada, but you go a little bit farther north and you'll find Alaska, and that's where Irene Bedard is, has calls her hometown, and she's made it down to Hollywood, and she's really carving out a place out there in Tinseltown. Yeah, and she came to the Creek Nation Festival and put on a concert with her band, and we got a chance to talk with her about uh, the musical side as well as the uh, movie side as well. So here's our interview with Irene Bedard at the Creek Nation Festival. And we are here with Native American actress and musician Irene Bedard. Irene, we appreciate your time this afternoon. You just, your band, Denny Band, just put on a great show here. Uh, for our watching audience here, tell us a little bit about yourself, tribal affiliation, and where you were raised. Um, I'm in Yupiak, Yupik, and uh, Eskimo. On my mother's side and my father's side, I'm Northern Cree and French Canadian. Irene, I don't, I don't want to embarrass you, but you are one of the most recognizable Native American celebrities today. You really are. And uh, I mean, well, if someone was to tell you that 10 years ago that you would reach the fame and success that you have today, what might you have thought? I was just this Eskimo girl from Alaska and I moved to New York, so went to, moved to Philadelphia, went to school and got my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Theater and then moved to New York City and start and, and there at the American Community the House I started a na Native Theater Ensemble with a, a bunch of the other people that were there and um, we were doing original works and plays and I thought I'd be doing plays my whole life. <laughs> it never occurred to me that I'd be you know, now I'm almost 40 movies. It never occurred to me that uh, Hollywood would want an Eskimo girl from Alaska. I have to ask you, on the art side, do you love in doing the music more or acting? Oh, that's kind of like asking what your favorite child is. They're so different because, the, see, actually, when I first started doing the music, it was, it was, it was, um, all of this stuff that was opening up because our son was coming into the world and it was you know post 9-11 when my husband and I started collaborating and we just had all these things that we wanted we thought well we want to hand on to the, the, this, our, our son our next generation and 
And um, so my heart's really close to the music and really close to that. And and um, doing doing films and television, um, I I really love the chance to be able to look through the eyes of somebody else and and through you know through history and I get to learn about you know being a human being a woman you know being um, all these different people in history and 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 um, in, and in fiction and and so it's it, they're so different they're so different you mentioned a little bit about your family tell us some names husband and children my husband's name is Denny and we have our band Irene Bedard and Denny uh, band we call us our band ID and um, we, our little boy, he, she's turning three tomorrow. His name is Quinn Joseph Wilson, and his Inupiaq name is uh, Iksuk, and it means someone who thinks before they act. Well, happy birthday out there. <laughs> One more question here. I could say all the movies and everything that you've been in here, we'd probably be here for another two hours and everything, <laughs> but is there anything on the horizon that we can expect to see you in, movie or television? Um, well, right now there are a lot of DVDs just recently came out. Greasewood Flats, Edge of America, um, uh, Into the West, New World, uh, and Mus Miracle at Sage Creek. Th these all just came out. The next movie that I have coming out is called um, Tortilla Heaven. It's coming out in October 2006. And it's with uh, George Lopez, Miguel Sandoval, Olivia Hussey, Elaine Miles. I mean, it's a really great cast, and it's about a small town in New Mexico where the face of Jesus appears on a tortilla, and it changes this sort of fable-like quaint town into, you know, the craziness of the world that it, we live in today and how, the, and how everyone wants to, to, to take a piece of that tortilla, that miracle. And so it's, it, it's really a look at a, it's a comedy, but it's a look at, a, at, at our, ourselves in a funny way, you know. Um, well, so we'll look forward to, to seeing that. Native American actress Irene Bedard, we appreciate your time, and Thank God you. bless, and all the best to you and your family. Thank you. All right, you know, the festival, so many things happening out there. Also, one thing that we also like to do, a special quest here on the Native News Today, is we are always in search of the perfect Indian taco, as well as the perfect Indian fry bread. And our quest hasn't stopped. No. Jason Absolutely is continuing not. that quest to find it, and his first time doing it, well, it was quite memorable. You know, Gerald, uh, I don't know, there's not much I can say really. I just, I, I've spent a lot of sleepless nights and countless hours combing the area, trying to find that, that majestic Indian taco, the one that just, it's like the tree. It's, it's like the Griswold family trekking through the, the snowy mountains looking for the Griswold family Christmas tree. And you know how when he find, when Clark finds it, it just kind of shines at him? That's what this Indian taco is going to be like, I think. But I haven't found it yet. I mean, I've found some good ones. That's the good thing. You know, the search is always, it's, it's not maybe the end result, it's the journey that you remember. That's right. So a little bit of philosophy learned along the way. Jason has ventured to community centers, to <laughs> festival events, Man. all places where people are bringing their Indian tacos, cooking them there on site, their fry bread as well, looking for the perfect Indian taco. So here's that first segment when we ventured out to look for that quest. Hey, this is Jason Salzman, All Access Native News Today. I'm looking for the perfect fry bread. Help me out. Jason Salzman here. We're in search of the perfect fry bread. And uh, I think we got a hunch. Hey, we're still looking here. This is what you're looking for. Oh, well, looky here. I think we found it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like Christmas. The perfect fry bread. Destiny? Ah, who am I kidding? The smell of food led us to the Tulsa Indian Community Center. Oh, boy, just look at that. Two of the four Indian food groups, grease and dough. Got a treasure chest right here, or a mock treasure chest, really, of some uh, golden medallions, if you will. And uh, I got the lady right here behind me that's responsible for all of this. Just TLC, and that's all I can give out. Today. Just Special what? Special ingredients, TLC. <laughs> oh, you got your meat, your beans, your onions, your tomatoes, and cheese, and lettuce. That's, that makes it. <laughs> you good. You wanted one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Look at here, look what I got. I'm gonna try it here just to that in. Oh, 
I may never leave. Okay, anyway, that's all. That. We're here with Tysela Smith. She is the Tulsa Power Hour Princess this year and uh, enjoying some tacos for a good cause for this young lady right here. I'm sure it's a great honor to be Tulsa Power Hour Princess. Yes. I better quit eating before I do the rest. <laughs> okay, this is basically a trophy right here. Got a great Indian taco being made by these ladies up here at the Tulsa Indian, Indian Community Center. And I tell you why we're here, we're here to raise some funds for this young lady right here. I was excited to know that I was asked to submit an application for this year's coming up um, rain. And within a couple of weeks they um, gave me a phone call and told me that they would like me to be their new upcoming 2006-2007 Tulsa Power Princess. And, um, I have a lot of people to thank for that because um, if I wasn't nominated or if anyone wouldn't have asked me, then I wouldn't have known anything about it and I wouldn't be making this great Indian tacos today. I'm taking this. <laughs> All right, and as that news segment shows there, we are dedicated and committed to finding the perfect fry bread, perfect Indian taco that's out there. And it doesn't matter where it's at, we're gonna keep finding it. That's our commitment for the year 2007. And you, and we throw a challenge out to our Western viewers out there now as well, you feel like your aunt, your grandma, or even you make the perfect Indian fry bread, Indian taco, hey, you gotta let us know about it because we wanna go cover it. And Jason, how do they do that? Absolutely, they can get a hold of us at, uh, by telephone at 918-732-7638, or they can reach us by fax at 918-758-0824, or you can always get us at our email. Mine is jsalzman at muskogeenation-nsn.gov, or G. Wofford at Nation nsngovernor And we're not only gonna be in search of the perfect fry bread, we are gonna hound down and hunt those good Indian stories out there in 2007 because we wanna bring those to our audience. We know our audience loves to see them, so we wanna bring them. That's what we're all about. We're about showing the good in Indian country, week in, week out, what's going on, and, and everybody out there, have your head up. Be proud to be Indian because shows like these showcase those great things, Cheryl. That's right. Well, that's going to about wrap up our program here, our first ever program for the year 2007, Native News Today. Again, welcoming our viewers in Oklahoma City and our viewers in Tulsa as well. Thank you for your year of commitment to our program, and we're going to just keep going on, and the sky's the limit for us here. For our producer, Josh Lane, Jared Moore, Jason Salzman, Gerald Wofford. In the meantime, take care, and God bless. We'll see you soon.